My advice to dancers. <laughs> I love this question. This is what I was meant to do. My lyrical teacher doesn't like me. I suck at them. Epsom salt bath changed my life. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Kennedy and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, it's gonna be a little different than my normally scheduled content, but let me cook. Okay guys, I think it's gonna be good, let me cook. So on a daily basis, I get asked so many questions, either on my YouTube, on my TikTok account, my mom's TikTok account. So I thought in this video, it would be fun to answer some of you guys' questions and to give my advice to dancers. Disclaimer though, I am not an expert, but this is just what I like to do that I really think helps me. So I put out a request on my Instagram story for some questions, make sure you follow my Instagram. There were so many questions and unfortunately I'm not gonna be able to answer Answer all of them but I'm definitely gonna be making more of these little Q&A kind of sessions because they're fun to make number one and number two I just love answering you guys's questions if you hang around to the end of this video I'm also gonna be giving like a little dance room tour since that is like my most requested I probably get that one on like every video I post so yeah stick around and you'll be able to see my dance room I've sorted the main like key questions into five different categories saying motivated competing dance self-care slash injury prevention, dance tips, and dance supplies and stuff. The first category is advice for staying motivated and I've gotten a couple questions in that category. The first question I got is how did you decide you wanted to be a dancer and not something else? I love your videos by the way. Thank you so much guys. Thank you guys so much for being here. Oh my gosh, thank you for all the support. That's hard because I never really like decided I wanted to be a dancer, I just knew, you know? This is what I was meant to do. I would always just be like dancing to music in my living room, burning holes in the carpet. And then like the key moment is when me and my family went on vacation in Florida and there was like this big like stage and then on the screen they were playing like music videos. And so little me was very bold and decided to go up on the stage while there were people kind of like sitting in like the audience kind of thing. And I went up there and I just started getting jiggy with it, you know? And then from that moment on, my parents Parents were like, yup, we're enrolling her in dance lessons. And I was just like, you know what? This is what I was meant to do. I was made for this. It's been history, you know? What's your inspiration and what inspiring words do you have for young dancers? <laughs> I love this question. That was so cringy. Why did I just do that? My best advice for young dancers or inspiring words that I have is to keep going, to never give up, to work really, really hard. I always think it's really nice to have other people that you look up to that can always be there to motivate you. And my last inspiring words is to never ever let anyone tear you down or tell you that you're something you're not, tell you that you're not a good dancer and if they do turn that feeling that you have about it into hard work so that you can get better and better and better all right how do you discipline yourself outside the studio this is a good question because I struggle with this a lot, but what I find really helpful is making a list and staying organized during the day. On Mondays, I don't have dance, so I know that day that I'm gonna be tempted to just doom scroll and rot, but like I have to do stuff, so I make a list or I think about in my head, okay, what do I wanna do for today? What's my workout plan for this week? And then it really helps me discipline myself. And also I have other people around me that can help hold me accountable. It's not always like I'm doing everything alone. I have like my parents, that are always just there to support and like help me when I feel like, oh my gosh, I just wanna do scroll. Oh my gosh, I just wanna rot. Don't just wing it. When I wing it, I end up winging it in the bed. How do you handle burnout? I've never really experienced like full burnout. I've definitely had moments where I was like stressed out, key to the moment, like, oh my gosh, I wanna quit. Like, this is so hard, I wanna give up. But I think my best advice is to just really find your love for whatever it is that you're trying to be. Watching people dance really like helps me when I feel like down or like I'm stressed out or anything like that. I would just try to like find my love for it again and think about the whole reason that you started. And if dance makes you happy, then you gotta keep going, you know? All right, this last question is very interesting. My lyrical dance teacher doesn't like me and it shows, what do I do? Hmm, I think what I would do is figure out why my lyrical teacher doesn't like me. Not saying that this is your fault, but I'd figure out if there's anything that I can do to try to fix it. Maybe I could ask the teacher what you can work on or like anything like that and work on it. Sometimes with the teachers that do have favorites, it's hard to change their mind. Don't stress over the things that you can't fix. I find that sometimes when I get rejection, especially since I do a bunch of like self tapes and like auditions for shows and movies and all that kind of 
kind of stuff. Learning how to love myself and being like, okay, this is something that I physically cannot change. So I'd always think about just trying to fix the things that you can fix and not like stressing over the things that you can't. We are already at the second category, which is gonna be advice for competing. And in this category, I only picked a couple questions, but I think they're really, really good questions. How did you know you were ready to start doing solos? I think I did my first solo when I was six or seven years old. When I was younger, I had a very like, if they can do it, I can too kind of mindset. So when I go around and I'd see other dancers doing solos, I'd be like, I want a solo. When you feel ready, you're like, I physically and mentally like, I. Can can go on stage, I can learn choreography, and I can dance for myself, that's like when you would know that you're ready. How do you avoid comparing yourself to other dancers? That's a good question too because I also struggle with that, especially since dance really is really competitive. Well this person, she could be going out for the same spot I am at this ballet company or in this like commercial dance, commercial job thing. <laughs> My advice is to realize that every dancer has something very unique about them. I'm a great entertainer. I tell a great story. So I think just finding yourself and also loving yourself, but I know that it can be hard and I struggle with that a lot too. This category is about dance, self-care, and injury prevention. So the first question is how to deal with periods if you're scared of tampons. Good question because I'm also horrified of tampons. I don't know what it is about them. They look like they hurt. My best advice is to get like like period absorbable tights or like underwear or like anything like that. That's usually what I do. You gotta deal with it, you know? Being a girl is hard. How do you deal with being sore all the time? Epsom salt bath changed my life. <laughs> Whenever I'm sore, I always do that. Rolling out your muscles and also like warming up really, really well before you dance because if you don't warm up and stretch, then it can lead to injuries perhaps. Yeah, that's just my advice for that. Moving on to our largest category. This category is dance tips. First question is, what are some tips to get flexible legs and be able to do leg holds? I was naturally born with very mobile hips, so I didn't always have to like stretch them a lot and like do like intensive stretching and stuff. But now that I've gotten older, muscles and like my flexibility is kind of like tightening up a little bit. I definitely would recommend finding like stretch videos online or like listening to like a professional about what you should do. I'll link some of my favorite exercises down below in the description. So if you want to check those out, you can. What are some tips to stay on your box as a dancer who just started point? Make sure that you really have good ankle strength and it's honestly less about like having flexible feet. Flexible feet is part of it, but it's not the whole part of it. It's more about strength because being able to stretch your foot in a certain way is different than being able to hold it. So when you're on point shoes, you have to activate your ankles and your Achilles. Make sure that you're doing releves or like exercises. I'm also going to link some of my favorite strength exercises in the description box below. Do you have a stretch routine or tips for stretching? I'm actually going to be posting my stretch routine soon, so make sure you look out for that one. How do you get in ballet shape and how do you catch up if you start late? There used to be a certain shape that a ballet dancer had to have, but guys, it's 2024 now. Industry is changing now and being more inclusive, but if you want to get more fit and like toned, then that's like a different thing, but there are plenty of workouts and like online stuff that you can do because because YouTube, they have so many exercises and workouts. It's incredible. So I'd say just like follow some of those routines. There's also not a certain age that you have to start dance anymore. Catching up sometimes can be a little hard, but you just gotta work hard, keep going and never give up. How do you get better at pirouettes at home? I suck at them. Well, I'm sure you don't suck at pirouettes. Holly's here too. She's excited about this question. But anyway, my advice is to always have a really good spot. For example, in pirouettes or just turns in general, you have to to make sure that you have head and body coordination, which is honestly pretty difficult. It took me a little while to be able to learn this too. Find like one spot that's about eye level, maybe a little bit higher. Just look at it while you turn your body. And then when you come around, make sure your head whips at the same time. What are some tips to pick Huh? What are some tips to pick up choreo better? I was just looking back at like old videos of me dancing at like conventions and stuff always going full out because you can think that you know something like in your head when you're marking it but then when it's full out sometimes the timing will be off and just like practicing it because it took a lot of practice because I used to be terrible at picking up choreography it was actually really bad I used to hide in the back corner of like 
all the convention classes I would go to and then I didn't know what I was doing. It was very interesting. What are some tips to be more interesting when dancing? So my advice is to always make sure you're performing for the back of the audience. I also, when I'm dancing, I love to pull from a real feeling I've had in life. Like for example, like not all the stories are gonna be realistic or anything like that, but trying to pull from something kind of similar that you've actually felt in your life, like a real feeling and trying to think about it and put it into your movement, it helps me so much with just being more entertaining or just having more emotion in general. How do you get a high bot ma? And by the way, I love your videos and you're such an amazing dancer. Thank you so much. So once again, making sure that you stretch. Also strengthening because stretching is one thing, but strengthening is another thing. So you can have a high bot ma and you can whack it up there and it can be behind your head, but can you bring it down controlled and not just letting it flop? I'm just choosing to come down more, not like, oh my God, I have to like let my leg down. We are actually at the last category and this category is for dance supplies and stuff. Where do you buy most of your leotards from? I love Yumiko leotards. They're really great quality. They're really pretty. They have a lot of really nicely made designs and stuff. You can make custom leotards but on the downside they take like forever to get to your house so if you order them online it takes forever to ship. So my advice is to actually go to the in-person stores in New York and I think they have like three locations now. What are some dance bag essentials? I actually I actually posted a video recently about what was in my dance bag so I'll make sure to link that video in the description so that you can see everything that I keep in my dance bag and like all the essential things but right now I would say that bringing food and water is so important even if you think that you're not gonna need it you always need water and food because you cannot dance on an empty stomach what nails do you get for dance because I love nails but they annoy me when dancing these are my nails that I have right now but I always make sure that they're not too long so that they don't get in the way of when I'm dancing so when I do have performances, I always make sure to take my nails off so that they're not in the way and then they don't like cut off the line. But yeah, that's my advice for nails. So I finished answering all of the questions that I could today. So now it is time for the moment of truth, the dance room tour. Hey guys, welcome to my dance room. a little seating area where you can put shoes on. Then I have this jacket that's like super sentimental. It's from when I was on Andy Live. Over here we have some stall bars that my dad built into the wall. And up here we have this high bar where you can do like pull-ups and stuff. But I actually, fun fact, I can't even do one pull-up without cheating. Over here we have this huge sign that says Studio K because this is what we like to call it, Studio K, you know? And during my era of when I learned a bunch of combos and we recorded them for content, we always like had this like decorative like background in the back because it just made the video more interesting. When you come over here, I kind of just have this random basket with a random ball in it. Like all my dance shoes right here. And I just got this little snow globe and just like this little like certificate from when I got Tremaine Best Dancer. Ballet bar, it's just like a really like simple ballet bar. I think we got it from like Walmart or something. Practice tutu right here. I have my other practice tutu over there. That one's a little thinner than this one though because this one's kind of heavy. When we come to this corner, I have all my equipment basically. So this is like all the stuff, like everything that I use for dance. Ankle weights, all that kind of stuff. And then I have like all the awards I can basically fit on this wall. So we got this TV. We also made that when it was quarantine, you know, Zoom classes were the thing. So it's still very useful, but I don't use it as much. In the summertime, I do take a lot of virtual classes though, like with like my private coaching and all that kind of stuff. I'll link them down below. And then in the last corner of my dance room, I just have some more awards that I can fit. So I've got like tiaras and trophies and some I've given away, some are in boxes, I've got random clay here. And my biggest question that I get is about the floor in my dance room. It's actually a pool noodle sprung floor. I'll like make a video about how it was made. It's actually very interesting, it had, like wood panels and pool noodle little things. So it is pretty springy. So it's not just like a hard surface because you don't want that you might break your knees. That was basically my dance room. So I think I'm gonna end this video right here. If you stayed all the way to the end of the video, make sure you comment the trophy emoji. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. New videos coming out every single week. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.